Hey fellow campers, Casey here with VanTripping.com and Mountain Bluebird. All right, today what we're gonna do is install tank fittings in exactly where we want them in our custom rotomotive tanks. So we're gonna put tank fittings exactly where we want them by spin welding them on. Here's how we do it. Put our safety glasses on, get your spin weld fitting, all right? Make sure you have also the spin weld driver, which can go into either a drill or a router. And we first start off by drilling a hole in the corner of our well, wherever we want them in the tank. That's the great thing about installing our own fittings. We could do whatever size we want. These are re relatively inexpensive. Do whatever size we want. The drivers are not terribly inexpensive, but there are ways to create your own custom one. So I can put exactly the size of fitting I want wherever I want it on whatever wall of the tank. So I'm gonna put it down here at the very bottom as low as I can get it. The key thing is we don't want to drill our hole uh, through the wall of the tank. So know your wall tank th thickness. Typically they're about 3 eighths of an inch. Sometimes it could be as little as 3 sixteenths and about as high as even 5 eighths of an inch thick. And sometimes also when you're custom ordering tanks like I did, you can also even choose the thickness of the tank. In this case, I went with their standard thickness, which is roughly about 3 eighths of an inch. So I've got my hole saw, I've got my, my spin weld fitting place where I want this hole drilled, and we're gonna drill this hole. And once we drill the hole, it's just going to go right in there. One thing you may notice with this tank, it's very uh, bulbous. Right? It's bowed out on all the, the walls here, particularly the bigger walls, the longer walls. And that's because when it's spin welded, there's a lot of hot you know, air that gets trapped inside of the tank. Once I put this hole in here, these walls will start coming back down. They'll, they'll settle out um, over all time. So let's get to it. So I know that size, I'm just double checking the size, I'm double checking my space that I've marked here, make sure everything looks just right and it's in exactly where I want it. And so there's a whole lot of just double checking here, always measure at least twice and hopefully only have to cut once, particularly in a custom tank here, we may not have that option. Oh man, I don't know if you can hear that. But so much air pressure came out of there, it just bursted right out at me. I should have probably drilled a little tiny hole first. All this, this air just came gushing out, kind of smelly air too. That's the joy of popping a, popping a hole in a pressurized tank for the first time. So we'll check our fitting. Oh, that's beautiful. It looks like it's just perfectly placed. And as low as we can get it in the tank, there's barely a lip there. That is great, so we're nice down low right in the corner where we want it. Now we got to spin weld this on. There's a couple different ways to spin this on, so let's get to that. It's good to just get these little fittings off and get that cleaned out. Before I finish this tank, I'm also going to put in my supply for the tank, the water that's going to come out. It's also going to be my supply in, and they could be combined. It doesn't matter if you fill them for the top or the bottom of the tank. It's all physically the same. It's going into the tank. You're fighting gravity you know, when you're filling from above the exact same uh, way, so there's no difference there. I'm going to put two hatch cleanouts on the top, a vent on the top. Uh, that'll only be a half inch because I'll have two tanks that'll be combined and from one shore power fill. So that 5 8 inch garden hose fill will get split over two half inch fills. Or I could do 3 quarter inch here since I have a 3 quarter inch fitting. And I'll explain why I'm doing the 3 quarter inch fitting here when I'm only doing really a half inch fill and half inch supply for everything. It's really because it actually allows this fitting, the 3 quarter inch fitting, spindle fitting actually allows it to get ever so slightly lower to the bottom of the tank by the way it's designed in the half inch one. So I can get just ever so slightly more water out. Also because I'm gonna need those half inch fittings that I have for some other uses for the gray water tank vents and also the vent the vent tank the vents for these tanks, my two supply tanks here. By the way, this is, a, this is a 45 gallon tank. I've got two of these going into the new camper, so it'll be 90 gallons in total. You'll notice too, just as a safety precaution, one thing I did is I have long pants on um, and, a, and a shirt because when I go spin weld, there's gonna be some hot plastic to spin off here. So just for a safety thing, also I wear gloves and safety glasses.
last spin on weld fitting for my tanks. I already have my two freshwater tanks done. I've got my three external gray water tanks done. I still have at least one internal gray water tank that I'm gonna add. Get just a little more capacity and like I talked about before, make sure they can use at least the sinks in freezing weather with tank for that inside. So I'm just gonna do one more spin weld fitting. I'm gonna put, to, put up here and show you. This is a spin weld fitting I use. I have two different sizes, one for a half inch and then this is pretty much for everything else. I just happen to have this connected to this angle grinder. There's a little bit of an issue with it though because you kind of can put force on it at this extreme angle instead of really flat down. You gotta really get these spin weld fittings flat down. So let me show you just a little bit how I do it. And just to give you a little guidance in case you wanna do this on your own at all. All right, so here's how I do it. Get the fitting in the place where you want it. Make sure that you're wearing long sleeve pants and long sleeve shirt. And the reason why for this is because plastic, hot plastic will be spinning off of here. You don't want to be have much of hot plastic hitting you. So that's one trip. Also wear gloves and eye protection to make sure you don't have hot plastic on your hands and or also into your eyes. Generally, it's very safe, it's quick. So it only takes a few seconds with something spinning this fast. So you gotta be very quick at it. You don't have a lot of flexibility and time. Just watch it. I'm gonna watch, keep it straight. I'm gonna set up my tank so that my grinder's off to the side so I can really adjust my height. And I'm gonna watch over here, put some pressure on the top so I can try to get it flat and level. And just watch till it kind of melts into a good point, which should only take a few seconds. And meanwhile, I'm also gonna brace it with my legs and knees so that way the tank can't wobble or move around while I do this. And just do it for a few seconds and then stop. And that should be it. And it's really hard to see that sometimes while it's going. And sometimes there's a little bit of friction, so wait till I get it done. But there you go. That's a perfect spin on weld fitting. If you can see that, it, it looks primo. It's like perfectly flush with the level of the tank. So it's nice and in there. It's solid. And it's, it's pretty even all the way around. So that's going to work great. Go ahead and install this last gray water tank and the air tank, get the fit house fittings installed there. Hook up the bracket for the uh, air conditioning condenser coil, brackets for that, to stabilize that, and run some gray water tank hoses. So I got a few more things to do.